Building your author platform is an important step in your journey. For many authors, that means jumping on social media. But with conflict broiling, your data being tracked, privacy evaporating, and plain old social media burnout, you might be looking for a new way to connect with your fan base. Something fun and reliable and something you control. The answer? Build your own platform. But how? Author coach and business consultant Joe Solari joins us to talk about ways to connect with your fan base. We'll chat about why it's important to have your own platform and lay out a plan for setting one up. So friends, let's get to it. Joe, thanks for joining us tonight. It's great to be here. It's been, uh, unfortunately, a long time. I think the last time I was on the show was like right after the last live 20 books, right? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. a while ago. We yeah. were hoping to see you in this past November, but it just didn't pan out. No, 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 it didn't. Unfortunately, yeah, I think uh, I did. I was able to get to Nink, so I did get my dose of, uh, you know, uh, author conference. Yeah, and, and we've been seeing you on other podcasts. We've been seeing you on the Twenty Books show. You were just with Craig and um, Michael the other day. Yeah, yeah, I try. I'm trying to get around, and I, you know, I just had the the latest book come out, so I'm gonna be out there flogging my wares. Yeah, well, flog right here. So, uh, <laughs> tell us for audience members who are new, who are you? What do you do? And what's this new book about? Sure. So, my name's Joe Solari. I live in the Chicago area. I help authors build great businesses. Uh, I really focus on the super uninteresting, unfun stuff of your business. So the back office, accounting, uh, taxes, when it's time to structure your business. But I, I really love working with authors because we have this opportunity around this golden age of content creation. And I can bring my expertise from the small business, small business perspective to help authors to you know, convert their creativity into wealth. So that's what I do. And um, the latest book is called Advantage. It's um, a pretty dense piece of work that I did research for over a year on some of the stuff we'll touch on today, uh, tonight, but really how the publishing market works, why certain people do better than others, and some real core principles that all authors should understand if they're going to be in this for the long term and want to grow their business. So one of those core principles is about building your platform. Um, tonight mm -hmm. we'll get into specifically like building your own platform. But first of all, what is an author platform and why do authors need one? Sure. And when, I, when we're talking, I'm going to probably go to some pretty high level stuff and like why you should be thinking about this as well as I, I promise I'll give people actionable stuff to take away. Um, so an author platform um, is really how you're connecting with your audience. And uh, as we were talking before we got online, a lot of people's author platform tends to be uh, sharecropping. They're on somebody else's land. And uh, while it's very lucrative, it's not their land. Um, authors suffer uh, like nobody else does in respect to um, when they're selling their product, they're really kept away from their customer, whether it's on Facebook um, and having organic connection with your customer gets harder and harder. Or when we talk about something like Amazon or Apple, where we just don't have um, direct connection to your customer. It's all the, all that access is secondhand. And if you theoretically, if you're talking about something like Kindle Unlimited, it's third hand, right? Because you, they're actually a customer. The customer is buying a subscription service. You just happen to have a book in that pays you per page. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So we're one step removed from those people that we're, we're um, selling our story to, telling our yeah. story to. Yeah. And so, you know, I know Nick Thacker's done a book on it. I think David Gogren's talked about it, but a lot of folks talk about how you can build something that's your own. Typically it's associated with a website. It could be even simpler, um, 
around using a, a mailing list. But the real magic about this whole thing is understanding how to get closer to your customer. And as we talk, I don't want to get conspiratorial and all the boogeyman stuff that's going on. I think the real the real thing you have to look at um, to understand how important getting closer to your customer is, is Disney's earnings this quarter. Okay. Because you think about what happened with the Disney Corporation. Uh, like a lot of companies, they got hit super hard. They closed down their parks. Their retail is off horribly. But how did they make um, their earnings? They have a direct relationship with their customers through Disney Plus now. Mm. They made their right. own platform. Exactly. Now, the, the interesting thing is that platform is still, you know, going through, um, you know, app stores like Apple and Google um, or other devices like on your TV, you're probably doing it through Samsung or, you know. So the, the thing that they have, though, is anybody plays any games with them and tries to limit where their app goes, they'll just take them to court and crush them like a bug. Right, like because they've got billions of dollars and the most evil lawyers known to man. Um, but as a as an indie author, you don't have that um, that pleasure to do that. So when we talked about platform, we're talking about where can readers go to find you and to access your books. And mm -hmm. right now, for a lot of us, they they're accessing our books on Amazon's platform. Amazon, it could be Kindle Unlimited, um, and they're finding us on Facebook or Twitter. So connecting to us and maybe we have a Facebook group, maybe we have a fan group there, uh, maybe we're tweeting, but we're using someone else's platform to actually either sell the books for where they're going to read the book or where they're going mm -hmm. to um, talk about the book and, and enjoy interacting with us if we are that kind of author. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some folks don't like to do that, right? Um, mm. It could be hard, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think when you're looking at this, um, you have to kind of go up to this higher level and thinking about it, not as far as, as a technology. So I'm going to kind of go at the 30,000 foot level and, and, and kind of go through some of my ideas um, about this. I think that who's ever watching would agree that what's coming our way. We have no idea. We're not, I'm not going to try and predict what the outcome is going to be. You probably also agree that things are changing faster and faster and are being more unexpected how they're changing. So that makes me want to help authors think about their business in a way where um, they're making them more resistant, and more adaptable. So, you know, from a biological standpoint, we don't know if it's going to be a meteor or a volcano or whatever it's going to be, but being the creature that can adapt to whatever the new changes are, right? So when you look at it that way, um, you you have to start thinking about what is the essential items for your business to exist uh, and get as, as close as possible to those. And that's your customer, right? With all the money that we get, even if your tertiary is a book cover designer or an editor, it all comes from somebody that's prepared to spend money to read or listen to an audiobook, right? So anything in between that is, is friction that we want to get out of the system. So part of this isn't just finding a, a like a platform that you have control over, but tr trying to think about things like how you can uh, make that transaction happen between you and your customer, right? Because the minute they start spending money with you and that money's hitting your PayPal account or that money is hitting your Stripe account, um, it does a couple of things. One, um, that money comes to you faster and a better margin, but you're establishing trust as a merchant, right? That they're willing to buy from you. Now, does that mean there's going to be additional work and a different and additional stuff to do? Yeah. But, it's indie publishing, it's always gonna be more stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to touch on, and again, this is kind of more of a philosophical thing, um, but it sets the tone for what we're gonna talk about. 
So I just finished up last year. I had a newsletter, um, three, three newsletters. I don't know if you read my newsletter, but it was on. I the, yeah, did, the, did you read the Tragedy of the Commons newsletter? Oh, I actually missed that one. Okay. I, um, I, I read some of them. I, I'm on okay. it on the list and I click sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, right. the honesty I, comes out. Yeah, no, that's fine. it's fine. So you can go back and see this, but I'll, I'll explain the concept for everybody here. So have you ever heard of the tragedy of the commons? It's, it's an economics uh, phenomenon. And basically what it is, is whenever there's a common resource mm -hmm. um, and we all use it. So let's say the three of us are ranchers and we've got this pasture and we're all ranching. Eventually we will ruin that resource, right? Collectively we'll make decisions for our own self-interest that uh, hurt all of us. So like, I might have, I might start keep increasing my herd and you guys have less to pasture on or you do the same or all three of us do it equally. We see it in fisheries, you know, aquifers, pastures, things like that. I believe that's what's happening with attention. So there's this, this, this commons of attention that's yeah. out there. Right. And, and what's going on is companies, we're, and we're, we're part of the problem, right? Because right. we're, and what's interesting about it is we're also, we are the attention, right? So we're on Facebook, we're on mm -hmm. uh, these different platforms because we enjoy it and we're connecting with people and we're giving them that attention. They're selling that attention. At the same time, we're trying to buy other people's attention to sell them our books. I believe what's happening is, is that we're eating our young. Like this thing is just going to cave in on itself because everybody's trying to sell everybody everything. Right. And in that process, those resources are going to be destroyed. So regardless of what happens with Facebook and Google, um, with the FCC cases, the states that are suing them, the EU that's got them in, in antitrust stuff, and all the other smoking guns that are there along with Amazon, the problem is, is that what they're selling is going to wear out because either we're just going to get sick of it, which I think is what probably made you want to have this call. A little you know, bit. Right? <laughs> A little bit, honestly. But all, all, also it is um, a, a process of us, um, we're just going to build up behaviors in our head where we stop. Mm -hmm using those services. So um, I know I went off on a little bit of pontification there. Bring me back, pull me back in. What's the question? So people's, people's brains are melting. I got that part. Um, and and I just, I want to add to that because it makes a lot of sense. Probably maybe eight years ago, actually 10 years ago, um, you know, companies, they're doing a lot of sales, you know, 50% off, 70% off every single month, every three months constantly. And people are learning to wait for that. And, you know, it, within the last like three years, I would say I've noticed that those companies are having a really hard time going back to purchase things at their normal price, stop waiting for all the big sales. So they've been making all these changes to how that goes almost to try and fix the, as you say, just the, the oversaturate oversaturation of attention because that's what the attention was, was the sales as the economy had crashed a little, people needed to save money. Businesses didn't want to go out of business. So they do a bunch of sales, but now it goes on for so long. People are fixed on that. You know, we're saturated oh, yeah. in the ads and you know, it's just a little at a little bit at a time and a student. It's just, so it, it makes, it makes a lot of sense. And I'll give you two examples of that, how it's, how I've seen it. The first one is if I know the store I've gone to is a Shopify store, I know enough about how Shopify's system works is they're going to send me in a cart abandonment coupon. So I'll, even if I'm intending on buying something, I'll put it in the cart, make sure that my email address is in there and then I'll back out. And I know I'm going to get a coupon. Oh, right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It seems you're waiting for the sale. You've been trying right? for the sale. I, like, I'm gaming the game. The other one is, um, so, and this is one of the things that got me on this whole attention thing. So a friend of mine said, hey, there's this really great place to buy organic beef. 
So I, I ordered some some steaks, and I saw when I bought them on the site, I got pixeled. I got the little thing that shows me that, whatever. Um, now, they didn't send me any ads. There was no advertising from them, probably because they're smart, and they're like, he just bought something. Um, we haven't even shipped it yet. We'll send them some ads in 45 days. I don't know. But when I, the next minute I went to my Facebook feed, I was getting all kinds of ads about organic food and meat. Mm -hmm. So they've taken that guy's information, which we've, we've all done as sellers, and, and they know how I went through, what I bought, lifetime value, all that stuff. Facebook's got it. And then they've sold that interest to his competitors. So that's kind of dirty, right? But then I'm like, meh, and I just go and I turn off that interest. So I don't get any of those ads anymore. So they all lose. Right. So that's right. kind of what's going on. <laughs> so if we're all clamoring for the reader's attention, you know, eventually that attention is going to start dwindling. And yeah. we're not necessarily saying, um, you know, everyone should get off Facebook. We're not saying that at all. Facebook's a great tool right? It's a great option. But what we are saying is, um, and, you know, I'm saying it, preach it to myself, right? Is that it's, it's wise to have a place where readers can go to find you if those other tools become available. Do you also have a, your own spot that you control, that someone's not controlling it and able to turn it off for you, that readers can go to find you, can find your books, or even you can sell directly to them? Um, so mm. let's say it's your goal to build your own platform by the end of 2021. You're you're an author. You maybe you've sold, you know, okay, I've got two books out there. You've, you've got two books out there. How do I go about building my own platform by December and having a spot where readers can come to find me and can come to get my books from me? How do I do that? Right. Yeah, so now we're kind of drop. We've got this philosophy of like why we want to do it. The next layer is, Here's the thing where I think authors have this amazing opportunity. It's almost a Trojan horse for them to, to market to their audience. Um, and that is the people that are readers, um, and, and I know you're both pretty big readers, um, you, have, you, you establish relationships with those characters, right? Um, you know, I, I'm wearing a 2001 T-shirt. Um, I've got, um, yeah, it is a health T-shirt. <laughs> um, and um, I've, you know, I quote lines from movies. Part of my identity is associated with pop culture and characters. And I seek to find communities where people talk about those things and associate in that same way. So... As we start to talk about the techniques of doing these things, what we want to keep in mind is, is that we want to build community and we want to focus on a brand that the, the readers can associate their identity with. That doesn't necessarily mean it, and it has to be with the author. In fact, I would argue it shouldn't be the author. It should be the characters in the story world. Hmm. Um, like Star Wars. Yes. Well, think so, and this is stuff I write about in my book. Um, is the, the the way that the market works is that um, there's this positive feedback loop, right? So people, when they go look for a book, they're going to see the books that have the most visibility. Why do those books have visibility? Is because more people bought them. Well, we like to buy things we know that other people have bought because there's assurance that it is a good, better product, but it's also that we can talk about that product, right? Mm. We don't just like to watch a show. We like to talk about watching a show. Um, so when you start to use those ideas in this process, we're going to kind of walk through during the show, then it could, not only can it be really powerful, but it can be fun, right? Because this isn't about just, oh, I got to go put in a website and I got to do this. It's like... A, you can start to do some things with your story world that blurs the lines and get your fan base to have more fun so that it becomes a natural uh, attractant to them to move into this platform, right? 
So whether it's going to be your newsletter or it's going to be a website with a membership site, whatever this, and it could also easily be a Facebook group, right? You could do it in, in Facebook and, and have this kind of stuff happen there. That's your personal choice. But the idea being that it's not transactional, right? It's not, Hey, come on in because I got books to sell you. It's come on in because this group is about my story world. So I, I like that. Um, thinking beyond your product, you know, your product just isn't the, the finished, the finished manuscript with that gorgeous cover and that awesome blurb. It's also what went into that story, you know, all of that research you did to try and, you know, get that perfect cover and, and all the right keywords and the right blurb words to get the reader to, to buy the book. You know, what can you do before someone's even read it or bought it that they're like, ooh, I love lightsabers. I'm going to check that out. You know, it's like, ooh, f fantastical portal worlds. That sounds super fun. Yeah. You know, and building on that. And they're like, I didn't know there was a book involved with this. I think it's kind of a beautiful thing. It's like it, you can you can create that organic glomming on because yeah, you're you're just like you said, re finding. I wrote it down. I can't even read it. Um, identifying identifying the way the readers identify with themselves. You know, so that's right, and and you know, so one of the things that I found really interesting about this whole thing is um, the your your reader um then the, there's you know went and dug up all this research about this when your reader is reading they're in a trance state mm. they're actually in a hypnotic trance very focused attention and their and your story world is unfolding in their memories and associations right so you're burning your characters into their limbic system their limb their lizard brain they're filling in the blanks with their memories, their associations, what they, you know, when you say it smelt like winter, what winter smells like to you doesn't smell to me, but it's, I know what it smells like, right? All that stuff gets plugged in and that character, you know, they've actually been able to see the associations created in, in functional MRIs when people think about um, either characters or world of their World of Warcraft avatar, like, and they're in the same areas as like their close friends and family. So like this is it's physically manifested in their head, and so we have this deep, deep relationship with this person, and then we throw it out the window and we go into full digital marketer and say like, buy my book now, <laughs> and and that's the part that just kills me is that. Um, we 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 can use this stuff in a way that no other marketer can. Plus, based on the topic of this, when everybody is losing their mind and they just want a break from what's going on in social media, where are they going to go? They're going to go to places where there's respite, where you're you're. It's about the character world and it's about stupid jokes and whatever that is that your thing is. That's a place for you to go and hang and and your fans hang out with people like them and associate with your characters, memes and identity and brand. Corey Gillum, he quotes Teddy Roosevelt, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. It's, it's, it's true, it's, it's, it's great stuff. Um, so I, I think that's kind of the philosophy and what, like even if all this nonsense wasn't going on, why you would want to do this and what what I've discovered, or how I, I should say how I discovered this was with working the clients that I work with. And you know some of my clients, but I, I work with a lot of clients who are doing mid six figures, seven figures, big names in the industry. And they don't get to that success the same way. They're not executing the exact same model. And a lot of them don't advertise. Some do, right? Um, so I was trying to figure like, what is it that, why is it that these, their businesses are so successful? And it ties into this whole thing of this cumulative advantage and how they've built this tribe that's around their brand. And when a book comes out, guess what? Those people go and they buy the book. 
Now, the part that I think we can all do better is, you know, we have this core audience and they go buy your book that gives you the visibility. Now you got some new fans that come in thinking about how you can use this platform to bring them in, to indoctrinate them, to get them to feel welcome, right? And I think that's something that just generally all businesses are horrible at. All we care about is getting the new customer. We don't care about once they are a customer, how we treat them, <laughs> right? Until we lose them. And then we're like, oh my God, they're the most- What happens? <laughs> yeah, right? Why won't you give me money anymore? Yeah. Because I treated you like a transaction. All I did was ask for your money, right? But if it's the other way around, if you're just putting out cool content and you're doing this stuff, and you're making it a really cool, unique, fun experience, paying for that along the way isn't a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. Disney was selling three million bucks a month in custom lightsabers at Galaxy's Edge. Just in the lightsabers. <laughs> just in lightsabers, right? Wow. Um, I don't know how many millions of dollars they sell of, of plastic wands of Harry Potter, but people stand in line for hours to have some guy, you know, do a little show and talk about it and sell you a wine, a wand from China, right? It's, it's a chunk of plastic, right? That you just paid 70 bucks for. But it came from the creator immersifying you in this world of these characters that just enrich everything that you're about. Absolutely. What's $70? What's 70 and, and their parents are prepared to pay the money because they're probably going to buy one themselves if they don't already have one, if they're a Harry Potter fan, or they want to see that joy in their kids, right? Um, so I, I think that people, when, you, when you're delivering value that way, it's, it's really easy to get whatever you're going to ask for. But when you're treating people like a transaction, um, it gets hard for the customer and it gets hard for you as the as the author. So um, how would you suggest that an author bring those fans in and, um, you know, indoctrinate them, make them part of your, your tribe, make them part of your team? Yeah. So I think one of the first places, the easiest places, and the one that you're going to have their whole time is your newsletter. And of course uh, it is, Joe. Yeah, like, <laughs> 75 percent of our audience just grown and went no don't don't make me do that don't make me write that please okay okay but i'm writing it newsletter but here here here's where this may get to be a less bitter pill what if instead of you writing me a four email sequence where first you tell me about your you know did i get my free magnet two that you like cats and snowmobiling and three, try to sell me your 99 cent box set. Instead, it becomes from your character world. It's your characters. It's right from, instead of going, because think about this. We have somebody that's in that hypnotic state. They've just read your book. It's awesome. They're in that story world, the end. And we go to full carnival barker. Come on in and buy stuff. Yeah. No, instead you have character A. What's up? How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> right. And hey, I bet you did. You remember back in chapter 16, that duck that walked across the scene? Click here and learn more about that and bring them in that way. Right. Have the Easter eggs open up earlier. Right. Because um, we we want that stuff. If we're it's it, it gives us a sense of, you know, there's some there's some gamification to it. There's a sense of uh, getting the inside story and, and having, I, I think for authors that struggle with sharing themselves, that they look to the cutting room floor and start picking stuff up and putting it in the newsletter and making it part of how they go about um, building out something that's engaging for me to go into your newsletter and read it. Because this isn't about attention. These people just spent you know, four hours reading your book, right? Like whale readers have no problem with undivided attention. It's just gotta be the right stuff, mm. right? And so that's what I think another part of this that gets to this whole attention idea is when we start to shuffle them off to other places like signing up for Facebook groups and that, there's an opportunity for them to get baited 
by Facebook, right? Mm. Because Facebook, once you're there, they don't want you to leave. YouTube doesn't want you to leave. You know, these pla these platforms are there to hold you, hold eyeballs, right? They're, how many eyeballs can we get on this? Because what do they want to do? They want to sell those eyeballs advertising. Mm. Did that answer the question? Uh, yeah, so that there, there are other ways to use the newsletter. So you are still advocating the newsletter, but you are saying that if feeling like a car salesman is what's holding you back from doing a newsletter, that's not how you have to operate your newsletter. You could use that creative content that you already enjoy writing and that the readers are there for anyway. They're not there for your car salesman pitch. They're there for your characters, they're there for your story. So why not, why not start there? Yeah, and, and to Kayleen's point, there's a few newsletters out there that they look like a Menard sales page, right? It's just a listing of books on deals, right? I just um, read, I'm like, <laughs> I hate that. So I'm like, I don't want to do that. And, but it's like, you make it sound so simple. Like I should, like I should have known this all along. So obvious. <laughs> it isn't though. It isn't. But it's not. Um, well, especially here's the other part of it is, is that, you know, when I was doing this research, it became obvious that, you know, part of the problem was when traditional publishing caved in on itself and indies had to start figuring out how to market this stuff, there wasn't any way to, there wasn't a, a real clear way to market, right? So they went and picked up the tools they saw were working, which were digital marketing tools, which are fantastic tools and work really well. But everybody's picking up these same tools. And we're all using them. And it's not just us as authors that are uh, saturating that market and, and, and reducing the power of these tools. It's guys selling courses. It's guys selling supplements. I mean, it's, it, it's just, you know, it just is relentless. And for, you got to assume our readers are just like us. They're just getting tired of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So newsletter is one thing. Um, and, definitely starting with your own website. And I did just get a message from the boss man, Josh Hayes himself. He says there's a 10% off deal with Mod Farm for Keystroke Medium listeners. 10% off to get your website done by Rob McKellen at Mod Farm. And I'm dropping the link in the chat. Awesome. And you can use that 10% off this year. Do it. So, um, yeah. So, so my, my, I, the, the thing about newsletters, it's nice is if you're just beginning, right. Let's, let's take this from an author that's starting at zero. Um, you, if you can buy a domain name, um, at a place like name cheap or, you know, 10 bucks, right. So that you can get your, your domain name. Um, you can, you don't even have to set up a website. You could literally set that thing up to, um, uh, when somebody clicks on that domain name, it sends them to a book funnel page. So you don't even have a website. You just have uh, your, your reader magnet and some information about you there. So like other, you know, other than the cost of your, your book funnel and, you know, that, that first off thing and, you know, something like MailerLite or MailChimp or ConvertKit, you can start building this mailing list, right? And in the beginning, when you're doing that and you're using something like Book Funnel or Story Origin, or are you doing newsletter swaps, which is another great targeted way to find people that are focused in your genre, um, you're going to get some readers that aren't the highest quality readers, right? They're around for free stuff. But it's a necessary step for you to start building your audience. Some of those people will turn into lifelong readers and spend money with you, right? Others, Maybe never open up your book, but it's very low cost. And it gives you a way to practice the stuff we're talking about and how you can do things to um, get them invested in your story world. And, and thinking about this, if you are beginning, is like, how do you want to do that newsletter? Do you create a character that's just going to be your newsletter character that's kind of bopping around in the stories? You know, um, th th all that stuff becomes if you're looking to do that stuff, fun to do. Um, yeah, that would be fun. Um, the news, you know, I, I think eventually we'll get to the point where 
you know, it'll probably be phone numbers, but you know, email people's emails are really kind of like their, their identifier in the digital world. And it's how you're going to be able to not only connect to them directly, and we'll talk about selling in a newsletter in a second, but um, if you, over time, if you build a high quality newsletter, it might not be your full audience. Let's say you've got 4,000 people on your list. You know that a thousand of them are like super solid, perfect examples of your ideal reader. That audience then is what you would use to do whatever kind of digital marketing you're doing. So like if you're looking, if you're going to create a lookalike audience, those ideal readers can become what you build a lookalike audience off of, right? Um, I'm starting to get into marketing, so I stop. No, me. you're good. I just I will say, I really hope it doesn't get to phone numbers because I already get unsolicited text messages about football coupons. I don't even watch football, and like random group tags. Hey, there's this thing going on. Come check it out. You get twenty percent off. I'm like, no random person from a six oh nine area code. What are you doing? And I don't know where yeah. they come from, and it drives me crazy. Yeah, unfortunately, that's I'm getting that kind of stuff too. Um, but I do think that as you know, there's there's a, a certain percentage of people that don't have desktop computers, right? They're they're all completely mobile devices, and um, they are using things like Messenger and text, where that's a better place to go, and um, Certainly, like I, I don't know if you've heard about Clubhouse, but if you go on Clubhouse, which is an audio only social media platform, which is invite only, I mean, when you load into that thing, they're looking into your phone book, right? Mm -hmm. That's the only way that they're able to figure out that I've got friends on there mm -hmm. that I can send invites to. <laughs> you need so, the permission to have access yeah. to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, um, so, Kaylin, do we need to pause for a spotlight break? I suppose we could. I suppose we could do that. All right, everybody out there in the audience, before we get back to this nitty gritty of stuff that, as Joe said, most people don't like, but I think <laughs> it's wildly important because it seems so obvious, but it's not. And that drives me crazy. So I want to nail the stuff that he's saying. Anyway. So tonight's spotlight is on No Safe Words, LLC, editing and author ser authoring services. If we can all agree on one thing, it's that 2020 sucked, but it's over. You know what you need. Ah, you know what you need to put it behind you? A better book, specifically your book. And what makes any book better? Great editing, of course. Great editing is defined by many things. In fact, it's not usual, unusual for TradPub to send a book to five or more editors. One to make sure the story works, one to make sure you told it coherently, to count the commas, to make the coffee, because there's no denying that fresh eyes are invaluable. Fresh eyes that understand what they're looking at, why it doesn't work, and how to fix it so it does work are the stuff of legends. No Safe Words Editing and Author Services is offering a limited number of very special bookings. Buy one editor, get one half off. Woo! That's two editors for the price of one and a half. <laughs> what does that mean to you? It means that you can have Kayleen, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, the dev editing Green William, make your storyline compelling. And Ellen, I don't know why they insist on calling me Cutter, smooth your syntax and make sure your punctuation and word choices don't make you look like an amateur. Or you can have Ellen line edit with some dev thrown in and have Ellen proofread or you can have Kayleen line edit and lovely Lauren copy edit, or you get it. Make this year better for yourself, your book, your readers. Do it for the children. <laughs> and you can find that at no safe words, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, All right, so say bare minimum, you've got that domain name, you set up your book funnel page mm -hmm. and from that, you, you are able to operate your newsletter. Now, what's the next step for using my newsletter and building my own platform? Yeah, so I think that um, 
you know, if you have the budget or when you have the budget, getting a, a, a website set up um, and turning that domain name into your billboard where people can come in and learn more about the brand, right? And the more you make that about understanding the story world and part of the story, the more interest people will have in going there. I think that too often we just think of these things as like, we're just hanging out a shingle, like um, is how more in the, right? <laughs> right? Here's my here's book, 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 which is great. But um, think about the websites you go to that are engaging. And it's not like they have to be full blown, crazy, all kinds of animation. But if there's a reason to be there and to learn, to explore them, um, we're naturally inquisitive. Um, the, the, the more we can do things where we can, um, uh, see people's behavior, then the more you can react to it. So there's no reason why you can't have, you know, stories up there, stuff that, um, you know, people can use to fill in blanks on other stuff. Um, I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not one of these people that says, oh, you got a blog, you got to write a newsletter, you got to do this. I think you need to figure out what makes sense for the reader experience you're trying to have. And it, it, as long as you stay true to that idea of this is about how, if my feet are in the shoes of my reader, they're going to experience this cool thing where, you know, they read my book, they come, they can learn some stuff. They can see that it's obvious to go to these next books that's the other thing for, um, you know, some of the folks we know that have 20 books out, they can't even keep all that story world straight, helping your readers <laughs> navigate, like right. it's the timeline, it's, <laughs> it's hard, right? Um, you know, the other thing I think that, um, and I, this will probably resonate with uh, some of indie authors and others will, their skin's gonna crawl in a second, but bringing your fans in to do fan fiction, mm -hmm. um, you know, there are some, some people that have come out of the fan fiction world that have made a, a boatload of money. That's where they got their writing chops. And, um, you know, if you have canon in your world and you have stuff where your fans can have ownership, you can really start to see some um, investment by them. Um, have you ever heard of the Ikea effect? Um, vaguely familiar. Yeah. So the deal is, is like, they've done these studies where, um, you know, you and I will build the same piece of Ikea furniture and then they'll offer you money for it. And you'll, you'll value your piece of furniture more um, than it's actually worth. Right. Because yeah. you, you've, you've invested in it. You've built it. It's like, yeah. oh, it's the same piece of, I can go and get it. And Ikea knew. <laughs> like, All right. So the Ikea effect had nothing to do with Swedish meatballs. Just Well, they're, they're good. You can get they them. They are good. <laughs> um, um, but so, yeah, th the point is, is that getting your fans to help do some of this stuff. And I, I you've had Chris Kennedy on, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. You know, Chris Kennedy's uh, fan club they're like a force of their own, right? Like they're incorporated in the state of Washington. These guys show up like full regalia at, at, at these shows. They, people are like, how does he, how does he win all these dragon awards? Because he goes to the dragon con every year and he sits at a booth and he has his picture taken with them all in his outfit, right? Like he's part of that tribe and he embraces that. And he, and when he first told me he was doing that, I was like, you know, that's your intellectual property. And he's like, hey, they know what they want. I would never be able to figure it out. Mm. Oh, now it suddenly makes sense, right? Like we, if you, the three of us tried to make a fan club, it wouldn't be what the fans would want. True. So, so you it, let them make their own club. So let, that's the other thing is start to think about ways that you can get your fans to to come in and, and start to help do stuff. Um, whether it's moderate groups, 
do stuff on your website. I think um, if you're comfortable with letting them do things like some flash fiction or fan stuff, let them do it. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's just a way for you to build a community. You know, and I just thought if you're doing like that flash fiction and, you know, say you have that tied to your website. So it's kind of like a, a Reddit or some kind of, you know, uh, forum based thing. And then you throw out a newsletter, newsletter, hey, user such and such just wrote this and that about such and such character. Check it out. Do to do. Go to the Reddit thing. And it's I. Yeah, exactly. And so now there's working, you, Joe, it's working. That's all I do. I just facilitate this stuff. Um, th that's not, th but that's it, right? Is if that works for your brand and you do something like that and, you know, you give it a shot. Worst thing, it doesn't work and you move on. But there's going to be some folks out there that they're going to dig that. And the fact that you acknowledge them, like it didn't cost you anything to stick it up on the website other than some time and the acknowledgement. And, you know, Maybe over time you start giving them stuff that they can't get elsewhere. Like they get a character named after them or they get to create a character or they get a book signed by you or all that kind of stuff that people that are fans of a community want. They don't want a gift card from Amazon. Yeah, no, they want something you don't from want the world that they've invested all their eyeballs and attention to. You know, they, they want to continue being immersed in it and find more new ways to be immersed in it. And, and we're in a world where, you, you know, I, I, was, I know that Scott Bartlett has done this. I know that Chris Fox has done this with stuff where when they've had their cover designs done, they've had 3D models made of either armor or spaceships. And then either they've um, done things where you can get those 3D model, you can buy them right? Or you can uh, get the, the file and print it out yourself, right? And so if you, your person's got a 3D printer at home and you can get that somehow, that might be cool. You know, that's, don't let, don't let your imagination, you know, how do I want to put, don't let your finances limit you. Just figure so out. On, on that realm, I would love to have tiny figurines of my characters because what do I have here that just delights me every time I look at it? <laughs> Little Mandalorian bobblehead with a Yoda. Oh, you. There but, you go. I mean, and, well, and you know, it's like, yeah, it's it's immersing me continuously in that world. I saw that and I was like, I don't care how much that costs, I want it. <laughs> you know, I think Jeff Cheney just shipped. He had a bobble. He had bobbleheads made. Did like a Kickstarter. Um, I think, you know, you can either facilitate getting little characters made or like I said, the files, once that's done, like if they have those printers themselves, like they can do it themselves and, you know, maybe they start put posting that stuff where they, you know, painted them and show you their painting skills. Now, earlier I mentioned using your newsletter to sell directly to your readers. How would you mm -hmm. set that up? So this is the other thing I think that is a big shift. It's been coming. And, you know, I think as, as we as an indie community work harder and harder to get a closer relationship with our customers, there's going to be some momentum behind this. So I'm going to talk like specific tactics for doing the sale of an ebook or now you can do it with an audiobook too. Ooh. Mm. Which is a whole new set of readers because yeah. or listeners because a lot of people just listen. And I'll talk about an experiment I did with that uh, for myself. But so I, I say for everybody, if you have book funnel and you have a newsletter, um, even if you are in KU, right? So let's this book, we got a book. It's your next book. It's gonna go into KU. Before you put it into KU you can sell your book direct in your newsletter. And the way you do it is very simple. You're gonna get a picture of the book cover to put in your newsletter. You use a PayPal account and you set up a, a buy button. There is a process in BookFunnel to connect that buy button up to 
book funnel so that when they buy that book, it triggers the delivery. So you never have to touch anything. Once they buy it, PayPal tells book funnel, book funnel sends them the book. Okay. Ooh. So you can then take that link, put it in, in your newsletter, you know, either as a hyperlink or a, a, a buy button so that they get the, they get your newsletter and you say, Hey, um, I'm I, for all you folks that, um, think that, you know, Amazon's run by Lex Luthor and you don't want to give them a penny of your money. I'm in KU and I, I, you know, I love it, but I know you don't. So I'm giving you a week to buy the book and you're going to get it before anybody else. And you buy it in my newsletter and you'll be surprised how many you sell. I'm not saying you're in a retired Tahiti, but like, <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. Like, you know, you want to publish on February 1st. You know, if it may, you then work it to, you know, being two weeks before you put it on KU, you said, hey, this week only, you can get the first copies here only. Miss out and it's gone because it's going KU. Yep. Now, if you want to do stuff where you start to, this gets to this platform comp, uh, conversation we're having, you want to start driving people from, other platforms to yours, you make that offer more enticing. Now that means that, uh, you know, because you're selling it uh, in your newsletter, you're going to get more margin and you're gonna get that money quicker. So that's that's just fun, right? Because uh, it's like 30 cents plus 2.6% is what PayPal will charge you. So you're gonna make like a 90% margin on a book if you're selling it for like over three bucks, right? Um, and you're gonna get paid in two working days. But if you say, okay, well, I'm gonna give it a little better price, or maybe you do it at the same price, but you give a bonus chapter or some other content that is exclusive to your uh, platform, then it becomes a platform only opportunity. And that gets to that whole thing of us wanting to be in the in crowd and the fear of missing out and all the good stuff that makes us buy $40 bobbleheads. Well, this one wasn't 40. I will say that. No. Okay. <laughs> but, but that, no, but I mean, that does, that does make sense. You know, they feel special. They feel that, you know, it's this, it's this world that they love and they can ingratiate more in it and Ooh, not everyone's getting it. It just has that feel of yep. a warm hug. Mm-hmm. And by the way, now with what uh, Damon Courtney's done with Book Funnel, what I just described, you can do with an audiobook. Hmm. So, um, you know, you think about what's a credit on Audible, twelve fifty. Fourteen ninety five a month. Fourteen ninety five yeah. for one credit. Okay. Yeah. So you can price your audiobook at. You know, 13, 13, we don't want to use 13, not a good number, but twelve ninety nine, dollars right? Um, and they're getting a deal. They're getting it less than it would cost them for a credit. They can own the book. And what, from a uh, an indie community thing, what's happening is those books, and this is something you need to be sharing with your audience, is there's a book funnel app where you can read the, the eBooks now and listen to audiobooks and it is one of the best e-readers that's out there wow and it's on wow. it's on iphone and it's on um android i did not realize they had an app they do Ooh. this is a big deal this is a super big deal because and oh by the way when you go and log in there mm -hmm. what's hilarious is you'll be like oh i don't remember downloading all these books <laughs> He saved all that shit for us. It's all there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So you get the Book Funnel app, and then any books that you've gotten through Book Funnel will be will show up. All those lead magnets, all that audio books, and now audiobooks. So I um, I did a back I backed uh, uh, Mal Cooper's Rika Kickstarter, and I got like fifty three hours of audio. Wow. It was like the whole series. It's crazy. Um, I'm just looking for the app. Um, but it's right in there, right? Um, 
so you know you can always oh, and that's just through through the book funnel that's the book funnel app right so and there's there's the audiobook. Uh, everything's so reversed. kind of like what we're talking about, you know, book funnel has been this sort of like side platform almost where they are being used for authors to have a little bit easier way to get their stuff to readers. So they don't have to go through the Amazon and this and that, but they have, they were still dependent on the Kindle and other, um, other platforms that these, authors are avoiding kind of like doing this they're still having to do that mm -hmm. and this way they're just like you know what let's just cut out the middleman we'll make our own app download it here you go and right and you're absolutely right and and you think about it when we start sending all these readers into this one app right so like i'm old enough to remember there was a time when the u.s government needed to stop microsoft from putting my uh, Internet Explorer with every computer they shipped out because it was monopolistic and they mm -hmm. spent hundreds of millions of dollars suing them. And in the meantime, a little tiny team developed Google Chrome and that became the platform. And I believe that book funnels book app is the Google Chrome of the browser wars that we are all going to collectively start sending people there and supporting it. And we know, because if you've met Damon, you know, he's a righteous dude. He's got indie authors in his blood. He's not going to screw us. He's built a platform that is um, agnostic to a lot of stuff that can be a problem. And he's not into the game. He's not trying to make money on this thing in the sense of like, I'm going to process sales, although he might be. Not a number to him. <laughs> We're, exactly. What it is, is it's about delivery, right? Right. You pay me this money and I'm going to deliver your stuff. Right. And so that we just, you know, we just talk through how you could do that in your newsletter with um, PayPal. Right. What I talked through there, you can do the exact same thing on this website you just set up. You don't have to have any real big e commerce setup. You could, again, set it up with a PayPal link on that page with a picture of your book. And when it clicks, you send them to PayPal, you process the transaction, you have BookFunnel deliver the book. And that's it. I really like that. Um, I mean, yeah, that right there completely cuts out all of the other platforms. It's 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 you. It's it's you on on a site that you control completely. You know, if you want an ad, you can put the ad where you want it instead of your stuff being, you know, framed in other people's ads. Um, and, you know, you can bring that your audience further and deeper into your book world. Um, and yeah, by cutting out that middleman, I mean, that, yeah, sorry. I'm rambling because my mind. No, no, I, no, <laughs> it's great because you're thinking this stuff through and it's like, so now all of your, you're suddenly in this world where on your website, you don't have a bunch of people um, trying to sell their books, right? Like I think, you know, I I'm an Amazon stockholder. I think they do a lot of stuff right. But I think their decision to really get into advertising is going to be a big part of their undoing because the more and more of the real estate on that page is going to trying to distract people from the page that you got them. On, right. Mm -hmm. And you as the author have spent money to get them there. And now they're doing everything they can to screw them off. <laughs> yeah. I was on there the other day and I was in the, the review section. I was reading some reviews and there's an ad for some kind of medicine that's got the scrolling side effects, right? Like there's so many side effects for this medicine. They've got this ad that just scrolls like all the things it's going to do. That's horrible to me. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on in this world, right? Like, but that's, there's more, that's easy money, right? They can go to a big pharmaceutical company and sell that spot for, you know, several hundred million dollars a year in ad spend and never give it a second thought, but it's distracting on your sales page. So back to our direct platform, now you can have a page 
you could have a long form sales page with pictures of your character. You can have the, the, um, the, the initial part of it is essentially what would be the look inside, right? And you can start to do some really interesting stuff, right? Because um, if you, I mean, you, you could do it with Google where you do a scroll intent, but let's do it a simpler way. Um, if, I mean, we're getting into marketing but uh, with this, but just let me walk you through this. So I have the first part of that look inside of this book you're trying to sell me. It gets to a, a kind of a cliffhanger. There's a button that says, click to read more clicks me in the next page, right? Finishes up that look inside. But I pixel that page. And now I can retarget that person because I know that they spent enough time to read through, let's say a thousand words, right? They want, so it more. Pretty, they want it more. And I can target that ad specifically because I know they read that on book one and I'm gonna tease them in my ad with more of book one. Right, get them back there. Maybe, and and because oh by the way, it's your website. You can offer them a deal. You can send them. You can you can send them an ad that says if you come over to this page, I'm going to say the book for ten percent less. Mm. Right. Um, the other thing you can do is um, if you're using Book Funnel and you um, you pixel and put Google Analytics on the uh, delivery page. Now you can use that data for lookalike audiences to go find more readers like the ones that actually have bought your books. So you've act, you've now broken the seal on uh, what Amazon's been hiding from us, which is your customers. That was another layer up again, if we're doing this with a WordPress site, you can then install WooCommerce, which is free. Mm -hmm. um, and with WooCommerce, you're getting into a more complex, now you're into a real e-commerce store, right? Where you've got sales pages and you've got inventory and products. Again, BookFunnel is set up to connect to WooCommerce. It takes a little bit of work, but it's, it's, it's easy. Um, if you can run Facebook ads, you can do this. Um, I used to say, if you could get a book published on Amazon, you could do this, right? Like they used to be so <laughs> horrific. Yeah. Like, um, when you do that, and now we're starting to send you know information back to the evil empire. But if you go and put in the WooCommerce um, API for Facebook and Google, they're going to start seeing the data of the products that uh, you know, and your customer journey, and you can start to use that to optimize your ads more. So now you and and you can go to something that authors have never had until this point, which is a true conversion ad. Um, so with the e-commerce store, you can set up like, hey, I'm going to spend this much money. Here's the ads to run, but you know what I want is I want you to sell this specific book, and because you've given Facebook that permission, they can see when those books have sold. Hmm. So they'll, they'll know what those readers who are on the website, what they want, what books to look at and get them to buy that book. Yeah, yeah. And like it's, it's, what's that? Kind of like the meat and then it shows up yeah. in ads. And all exactly. And that gets back to the stuff that aggravates me, right? So I'm, I am kind of- It's a double edged sword. Right, I'm on the commons with my sheep again. Um, but I, what I do think is if you start to do this stuff and it's more the philosophical stuff, if you start thinking about your audience the way I talked about and you start to think about how you can um, work to build this community, mm -hmm. that those people are going to find you audience on their own, right? right. So one of the things I talked about in Advantage was this idea of a brand promise, right? And it's like this, this feedback loop. So can you clearly articulate what you would want one of your fans to say to one of their friends that they think would like your book? 
Most people can't. They haven't given it that much thought, right? I've tried, but, but... But if you can get that and you can figure it out and get it concise so that you can feed that to your fans, right? Repeat mm -hmm. it to them, get them so that they say that, right? So that when they are in that situation, they can give that elevator pitch, right? So now their friend, they're having wine. Oh, I like that book by Kayleen. They pick it up. They go read it. Did you deliver? Does that book meet that brand promise or is it off somewhere else? Because that's the other part of closing that loop is you just traded on the reputation of one of your fans, which is a, think about the risk they're taking, right? How much they've invested to say that they want one of their friends to read your book, right? And there, there's a whole social thing there that's really important. And then you don't deliver. Mm -hmm. So I think if we put more time into thinking about closing that loop, you'll get, you'll get right. over time, you have to give it patience, but you'll start to see that, right? You'll start to see people saying those words and people repeating them back to you. You'll start to see them in your reviews. You'll just see um, a lot more organic growth coming out of your business. So in that, would you say that's similar to the may the force be with you? And now there's a whole joke on may the fourth be with you when that comes along and there's whole holidays that have come up and, or is that? That's more of like a sacred word or a creed, right? That's a way that we as fans um, identify each other and, and, and connect. But, you know, how would you, like, how, how would you, we all do this. Like, how would you explain to somebody why they should watch Star Wars? Right. What is that's, it that you got? I, I want Yeah. Um, that's basically what I was asking. What sort of like that difference would be um, between, you know, like, people are seeing those things. They say them all the time. They're in memes. They're, you know, made up holidays now, but yeah, looking at it more, how would you exactly you said, what would you do to get someone else to watch it? You're not just going to be right. like, may the fourth be with you. Cause they'd just be like, yeah. <laughs> and you yeah. too. <laughs> all right. That's nice. for that pepper spray. Yeah, um, one example I was thinking of was galaxy's edge actually. And I heard Nick Cole say early on it's star Wars without the star Wars. So it's, it's all the fun of star Wars that we all love, but with really solid storytelling. And um, so the, the same characters, not the same characters, but, but the fun characters that we enjoy, the, the worlds, the alien races, the tech, um, the excitement, the space opera, but we also have really solid storytelling. So, He's got some good ones, right? So let's yeah. use him for example. Like, so there's, um, I've heard him say to me, it's Star Wars and G.I. Joe mixed together. I was going to say Sandbox. Yeah. yeah. Right? And then the other one he says is like, um, it's for those of us that uh, wanted to join the rebellion and then found out we're a stormtrooper. Mm. Right? So th those kind of things um, resonate with the right audience. Like if I'm that person and then that resonates with me, I know the people that resonates with and I say that to them, right? So like I have, I have friends that when they suggest things to watch, I make sure I write it down because I know our, t our tastes are almost identical, that they know what I like, I know what they like. I have other family members and friends when they say stuff, it usually validates why I haven't gone and watched that show, <laughs> right? Because I know it's going to be garbage or it's, they think it's good. I just, I know I'm not going to find it, right? It's not going to be to my taste. We're, we're making those judgments. Our fans make those judgments. And the more that we can do that, right? Because that this is tying into really basic behavioral stuff, right? We want to be in our tribe as our tribe Star Wars or Star Trek? Are you Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, right? Like, um, th those are the kind of, and we indoctrinate our families to this stuff. Like, over Christmas, we watched my 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 two boys and my wife. We watched all three Matrixes. 
and all of the um, Lord of the Rings. And there and we got the long ass discs too. So like, right. I don't know how many hours that was, but like- Director's cut. Yeah. And this wasn't the first time. It wasn't like we just got them. Like, <laughs> like hey, you guys want to do another, another night? The yeah. But, and, and it's like, we want to do that. We want that experience. And it's, I think that um, for indie authors, we tend to not think that we're at that level, but we are, we're building this, we're building iconic content that's going to be generation influencing. Not everybody, some of us, you know, some of the people that do this, they suck and they'll never sell a book, but there's going to be a lot of us that find an audience that really are endeared to this content. And the beauty of this world is, is that not everybody has, it's not going to be massive success for everybody, right? You can, you can live on a smaller audience because of the stuff we're talking about, being direct and getting more of the money in your pocket. So I, through this whole conversation, you have blown my mind a little bit. Every time I try to think about what's my platform, you know, I'm thinking about me as an author, just like what you said with newsletters, you know, talking about my pterodactyl burden. But that is, unless I have a giant pterodactyl in my stories, it's taking away from my content, which is my book. And one of the biggest things that I take away from this episode is your author platform begins at the end of your book because that is where all of that that's where your meat is you know if you have I, I can't remember what author it was but they specifically had this restaurant in you know through their sci-fi where characters would constantly go to and now they have merch people can come and like talk about the restaurant it's this thing at the mm -hmm. restaurant and that becomes its own world um so being able to like you're saying drop those easter eggs and then pull them out like the duck finding out more about the duck you know and um giving extra content to, hey this memory that the character had read more about it here you know those sorts of things and doing so on your own platform a website you control that whether or not you're completely cutting out all the other platforms you know be it the facebook or the amazon you know, using the BookBub links through the PayPal and all that. Um, the more you control, the more, the closer you get to your audience because then your audience can speak to you and then you know more of what to give them because that's what they're, that's what they're responding to. So uh, yeah. that's my big takeaway and got a ferment on that because it sounds super easy because you have these examples like Star Wars, you know, and like basically all of Disney. Um, and, but they know the formula, they know their formula. What's your formula? It doesn't have to be the Disney formula, but start now and figure out what, if you were your own reader, what more do you want? Yeah. Out of that story you just read. And, and I think that, um, so like when I finished writing this book, I had a lot of people that read it and were coming to me and they're like, okay, so like, what do I do next? And one of the things that I really talk about in this is that it's going to help you to get away from the pack of people doing gimmicks and hacks and whatever it is that the next thing is that's going to lose efficacy in the next 15 minutes. The hard part is, is like these ideas and these concepts, the, the insights that you have, that's this, this, this system. This is this framework, which I call this virtuous marketing cycle that has to be done your way. Like I can't give you a blueprint you can roll out and you can just copy it because those things fail, right? Those things wear out those that when that, um, gets out, it's no longer the seven secrets or whatever the thing is that people are selling. But if you take these ideas and you apply them to your brand, they're, they're so unique because it's all enmeshed into your story world, right? Mm. Um, now, the one thing you did say, if you are a good storyteller about your author life, 
because there's some people out there that are they're great at it. They're hilarious. Wait, I'm not, yeah, definitely not saying not to not do that. <laughs> yeah, that, then that that can be your shtick, right? But I know for a lot of authors, it's like this is the worst thing that they could ever like after maybe book descriptions. It's writing their newsletter, right? So I get it, and but then it's like, but wait a minute, you just wrote ninety thousand words, and you were smiling the whole time. Like what? Take that stuff. Because some of it is probably not appropriate to be in the book if you're really looking at how to execute a good story. But, you know, people sit around to the end of the credits now to, at the end of Marvel movies. It's like, no, 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 wait till the credits. There's going to be an extra scene. We're going to sit here yep. for these eight minutes. <laughs> yep. We're going to see every guy that did every different special effect with names I'll never be able to pronounce. Yep. Like, oh, here comes the funny things. It's coming. It's coming. Yep. That's, they've trained us. It took a while, but. Bonus content. And yeah, that's, that, that leads into what I'd mentioned earlier with the, with the sales in all the department stores, they trained people to wait for sales. And now they're having to backtrack because now it's losing the money. You know, they need people to buy these things at full price, not uh, if you just wait a month, they're going to put it, you know, half off. And if you can wait a little bit longer, it'll be on super sale. So no mm -hmm. big. Oh, um, you're going to charge me shipping? I'm not paying shipping. Right. right. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that this um, it. So here here's the other thing. If um, This is, again, uh, Nassim Tlaib. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Have you ever heard of the Black Swan, the book he wrote? Yes. I, yes. Yeah. So, like, the whole premise is, is, like, everyone in Europe thought there was only white swans until the Dutch got over to Western Australia and they saw a black swan. And, like, then we were all like, oh, black swans exist. And that, it's, like, part of our thing. We don't know what the black swan events are going to be in the industry. Like, we don't have any way to perceive what they're going to be. But what we can see is how messed up and crazy these things are that are happening, that people are sick and tired of being on social media, that uh, these big tech companies are wiping out smaller tech companies, that um, the government, while they can't agree on a lot of stuff, one thing that they can do is pile onto the tech companies and go after them, right? And nothing distracts a company more then the Department of Justice coming at you full force. And for these big guys, it's not just here. It's over in Europe, too. And Europe just makes decisions. It's like, you owe us two billion bucks, right? It's like paying playing Monopoly with a five-year-old. They just, give me money. So they're going to be distracted. They're going to be making changes. So we shouldn't be surprised if we had this you know, this setup in December, that whatever we did set up for our platform, that the rest of the world is wildly different. This, what we set out to do, it is the one thing that's stable for our fans. And I think that gives it even more power. Right. And if you're thinking at home, uh, website, WooCommerce, book funnel, I have no idea how to do any of this. Um, Kayleen, Ellen, and I, we had our website done for us. It was a simple and easy process by Rob McCullen. He gave us a really great deal, and he's giving uh, any key stroker out there 10% off at modfarmdesign.com slash keystroke to get your 10% off with Rob doing your website for you. And he's really sweet and great. And yeah, he just kind of asks you, what do you want? How do you want it set up? And he just makes it happen. It's really wonderful. Yeah. And if you, and if you are, um, cause I do also have my own personal author website, which I did myself and I'm probably on the fourth rendition of this website, which I'm about to get on a fifth one because Joe, Joe over here <laughs> done be giving me ideas. Um, yes. You know, I've spent a lot of time, uh, you know, digging through, I can't even remember what one, but I bought my domain. So I own the rights to that, to that .com. And, you know, now I have this platform that I can use that .com on and do all my little finagling and whatnot. Um, 
So now I have more options and ideas to, yeah, bring that audience to you. So whether you're going to figure it out how to do it on your own or go get Rob to do it, you know, just know what you're getting, know what you're getting into and financially know what you can afford. So that's also another thing to always keep in mind. And as Joe said before, it takes time, you know, don't wait three days, don't wait two weeks. You know, sometimes a lot of these things will take a couple months. We'll take an entire quarter of the year, you know, before you actually start to see the change because there are billions of people out there, right? And everyone is screaming. Yes. And, so, it, it, you know, it, go ahead. No, I'm good. Does it? Um, you know, I think that's the thing that um, is hard for authors to understand. And it's one of these myths that, you can just skyrocket up the charts. And it's just not the case. It, it's, it's a game of rounds. And, and the whole thing about cumulative advantage, which drives this market is, is that it's the resources that you collect in this round, using them effectively in the next round. So when you look at somebody that's been doing this for a while, why they're so much further ahead than you is because they played more rounds of the game, right? doesn't mean that you can't catch up or surpass them because we've seen that happen. It happens all the time. But you can't just expect that you're going to rocket up the charts and you're certainly not going to do it with advertising because I can guarantee you, you do not, you cannot spend enough money to, to, to get up the charts because I have clients that can, okay, that they have no issue with stroking $100,000 in a month if it's a big launch, okay? So now you're thinking, oh, I'm going to spend five bucks a day, right? Like, just keep that in mind that, and I've also proven in the stuff that I've done that that doesn't get you necessarily what you think it does to spend that money, right? Because a lot of the folks that we've talked about here, they don't spend that kind of money and they're getting their books on a regular basis into the top 500 in the whole store, not in some arbitrary category, but the whole store. And that's because they built an audience, right? And when the book launches, those people are there and they're rabid and they're going to read it and they couldn't wait. So um, I, I, I can't stress enough that like patience is a big part of this game. It's hard, but um, just, you know, if you don't know what to do, go write another book. Mm -mm. Yeah, you can't you can't fight the boss level at level one. No, right? that's a great way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> Work up to that level 80. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know, don't screw up your uh oh, I'm missing the word. Dang it, just flew out of my head. Um it's not category, but y'all know what I mean. Um, you know, if you're a warrior, do the your warrior class. thing. What was that? Your class. Your class. Thank you. Yes, Joe to the rescue. Don't screw up your class. And, you know, but don't also be, don't be afraid to try new things, you know, because you could be a wizard, wizard warrior. Why not? Just know what you're getting into and have the mm -hmm. patience to find the links. But yeah, absolutely. Grow your audience. Um, really figure out what it is about your content, which is your story, your characters, that world that the people want, want, want and give it to them in any way that comes. If it's on Facebook, if it's through Amazon, if it's your own personal website, Instagram, the Twitter, um, different forums and things, wiki pages. There's a bajillion and a half ways that you can reach your readers, but take the fire hose in tiny cups and be patient. Mm. All right, Joe, thank you so much for, for coming on and I love these kind of conversations because this is the side of of the journey that like I, I can see it and I'm like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to decipher it. Like I, I get close to it and then it all turns Chinese and I don't know how to read Chinese. So thank you so much for giving us giving us something solid to really, you know, glom on to. Yeah, I, I, I love sharing this and um I, I, I really dig this community and hanging out um, with you guys. I, 
I genuinely miss seeing you face to face. So this fills a bit of a hole. Yeah, <laughs> um, I agree. But yeah, um, this is the, you know, I, I love thinking this stuff through and I really do. It, it's not some shtick. I mean, I really believe that um, these ideas that we're talking about are going to be industry shifting. Uh, and it's going to be somebody that's listening to this podcast that's going to be the next George Lucas. There Just you go. Got to do the work. Got to write the words. Probably be better. <laughs> and that's right. Don't forget to write the words because your first sentence sells your first book, but that last sentence sells the next. And if you don't have a next for people to buy, you're losing readers. All right. <laughs> so everyone out there in the audience, Joe, what was that? What was the book that you said in the beginning that you're like, I don't want to advertise, but I'm like, we're like, do it. Tell okay. Us what so the, the book is called Advantage. 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 Uh, it's on all, it's, I go wide and, um, let me just quickly check here. I think it's, uh, I should know this, this, all this Mr. Marketing Wushu and, um, I believe it's joesolari.com backslash audio. You can actually buy the audio book from me on my website and see it delivered into your wonderful book funnel store. There you um, go. I'm, I'm doing that myself. So it's, um, 12 bucks, something like that. See and, and with that for, especially for the people where you're like, I want to support my author. I don't want to give to the conglomerate, man. There are ways happening where you can control your own store and that revenue does get back to your pocket and you don't have a 1495 book where you make a dollar 50. You have a 1495 book where you make 1495. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so if you just go if you just go to my homepage and you click on uh, why my ads won't scale. So go to josolari.com and you go to um, why my ads don't scale. There's a little thing there. You'll see where I sell the book um, and then um, it's uh, direct audio is for the uh, the book the audio book link where you buy it on my website and then it goes uh, it gets delivered by book funnel and what's I'll give you another example why that's great so I use find a way to do my audiobook mm -hmm. and you know my audiobook isn't up on Amazon yet it's still going by snail but in the meantime I've been selling it direct on my website and I'm, um, I've already made back what I spent on the narrator. Wow. Well, there you that's go. Yeah. So that's a, that's a positive check mark. Wait, where am I there? Check mark in that box. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. We could probably continue talking about this for even longer, but I don't want to keep you too long. And I can already hear my pterodactyl as it twa <laughs> at the door because she probably wants her mush. Alrighty, everyone in the audience, thank you so much for joining us live. Everyone who's listening on the podcast, come come check us out. Come, come hang out with us. Man, if you've always had been like, I wish I could answer, have this question answered, come do that live. It's TWJ, The Writer's Journey, Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. You got to remember, new time now. Um, and make sure you hit the subscribe button, ding the little bell. You know, share us around. Let people know we're there. We love you and we want to give you the content that you want to hear. So drop comments or come check us out at Keystroke Medium on Facebook. Um, we're also Keystroke Medium on MeWe now. And we also have a Discord. There's also the Keystroke Medium Keystroke Remo. Message Josh Hayes to give you the link if you're an author and you want to have fun marking down and forgetting to load your word count for the day and then doing everything in December. <laughs> that also works. Alrighty, we're here for you. We love you. For the for Lauren Moore, I am Kayleen Williams. Thank you for joining us. And I need to read this because it's been a while. I keep forgetting to say it. We'll see you next time to talk about reading, writing, and everything in between right now here on Keystroke Mediums, the writer's journey. <laughs>